Hello everyone and welcome to the Clockwork Cantina episode 102, new episode of the year, first episode of the new year, and I'm one of your hosts, Josh902, and this is the other host of this awesome show. I'm DT3, it was good everybody, happy 2022, we're here. Happy 2022 everybody, yeah, we're here, we're, we're going, um, we're Episode 102. But I'm still hard to believe we're in like the triple digits now. Like, you know. Episode 102, man. We're It's uh, yeah. It's it's, it's, it, it's nutty. It is nutty. Uh we're gonna, so we're going to get here eventually, man. Yeah. Yeah, well here we are. We're going to keep going. We're going to go go all the way. Um whatever that means. Uh, we got we're gonna be talking Cobra Kai in the second half of the show. The new season's out. I've watched all of it. Daniel's watched all of it. You'll hear our thoughts on that. Yeah, season four. Uh, it was. I'm gonna just go ahead and say it. It was great. It, it was. was so good. I love I it. Wait. Uh, we're, 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 <laughs> we'll get to it soon enough. There, there yes. isn't a whole lot of news. I mean, we, yeah, that's true. We say second half because usually that's what it is. But I mean, we're. Yeah. I don't even think we're gonna take a break today, man. We're just gonna no, go straight to we're it. We're gonna go quick because. Not a lot of news. Yeah, there isn't a whole lot going happening this uh, this week because you know it's the first it's, it's the time. first week of the year. It's still you know people are getting over you know holiday stuff, so it's all good, man. It's just that time, man. It's always like that. It's always like Christmas and New Year. There's not a lot of news. Everybody's taking their breaks. They're getting rested up for the upcoming year. And if you're like me, you're freezing your ass off right now because by God, there was a cold front that came through last night. I literally stopped playing games, was going to go to bed, and as I was getting ready for bed, my fucking power went out. That's how strong Ooh. this pet, this fucking storm was last night. And it came back on like a, like 30 minutes later, and I immediately messaged Daniel. Because my phone doesn't have data on it. I have to use the have the house internet. And I had to message Daniel. I was like, just in case it goes out again and doesn't come on for a really long time, just be aware in case the show gets delayed. Of course, yeah. that didn't happen anymore. But I always like to give Daniel a heads up just in case something crazy happens. Yeah. Uh, uh, so I'm freezing my ass off right now. I got the heat on though, so we're we're making it. My hoodie's over there if I need it. Stay stayed nice and warm. Um. Uh, but yeah, we've uh, we've been up to some things, and that's usually how we start the show off with what we've been up to this past week. Yeah. Daniel, do you want to start us off with what you've been up to this past week? So. Over the past week, uh, there was the Halo holiday event thing. So I was trying to play a game every day to get that, you know, uh, make progress in that. So that was pretty good. Uh, I think they're starting up a new one today or tomorrow. Tomorrow, maybe. I don't know. Either either way, today's the last day of the of the current one, the current thing, mm-hmm. but. So that's been cool. Uh, try out this new game called Ready or Not, which is like a tactical uh, shooter SWAT, SWATy SWAT SWAT type game. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I have I have a great time with it, uh, especially with when you're playing with other people. It's uh, fun. Uh, so that's been good. I tried out Hades for the first time. I know everybody's been talking about this game for like a, like over almost two years now. I want to say since 2020, uh, I played it. I enjoyed it. It's 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 pretty good. Oh, yeah. I don't I don't I don't like roguelikes, but uh, that one, that one, I feel like I don't mind dying because it's like you know you you mm-hmm. uh, it kind of that's how you progress, right? So it it doesn't like it. That it game just drips with style. It's very pretty to look at. I don't. Oh yeah, it is. It's the the art style is very, very one of my favorite things about the whole. Probably my favorite thing about the whole game. Yeah, it's uh, it's really, really good. I, I like all the little side characters you get to meet and everything, talk to and everything. It's good stuff. I'll have to play more of it. But um, yeah, I like it. It's good. Which again, considering I don't like roguelikes, that's you know, hey, crazy. Um, played Man Eater, which is the uh, shark game where you. Play as a shark and eat people. Uh, that's cool if you're just looking for like a you know goofy, silly, fun time where you don't really have to like you know the, not a story game where it's just like oh right, we're just gonna you know go and eat some people and and you know collect collectibles because there are collectibles you can get in the map like license plates and 
you know, there's like, uh, what is it? Markers for like, you know, different landmarks of the map or whatever. So there's stuff like that. There's, there, there's, there's things you can do aside from eating people, but yeah, it's a uh, pretty, pretty cool. Uh, played a bit of fall guys trying to make more progress on the, uh, um, the pass with that one. Uh, I gotta get the fifty, man. I gotta get that. I gotta get that the Ghost of Tsushima skin, man. I I need it. I needs it. Uh, so I'll probably play more of that this week. Hell yeah! I tried out Super People, which is like the new the new battle royale right now. Uh, it's like a mix of Apex and PUBG. I would say it's more PUBG though, but it does have like abilities and stuff, which is where the, I you know I meant I why I bring up Apex. Um. I like it. I almost won my very first game. I, I got second place. It was just me and one other guy. And uh, oh yeah, yeah. I uh, I didn't win, but I was close. And then uh, we've been playing uh, some Project Zomboid. Yeah, that's the current. Uh, that's the current game that the group on my Discord is playing. So we're all, you know a good, a good bunch of us are, are, are playing. We went from one zombie game to another. Uh, we went from seven days to, to Zomboid. And uh, yeah, that's a. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's 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 different. Um, <laughs> it's difficult. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's it's it is definitely different in more ways than just like you know because you know you, saying you go from one zombie game to another is you know you could say that, but it's they're different games. Like it's this totally one is different. definitely definitely more difficult than Seven Days for sure. Um. And yeah, the, the the view is different. the The way everything is is just it, it's just a completely different thing. But I'm having fun with it, with, with you know how we how we've been playing it. Um, uh, I watched obviously the first episode of the Book of Boba. I'm excited for the next one here in two days. I cannot wait. Um, but yeah, we'll talk about that when all seven episodes are out. Uh, I've been playing. More Animal Crossing as well because I have been uh, I was inspired to redo my island yet again. So here we are again, redoing and reorganizing everything because why not? Uh, it's fun to mix things up every once in a while. So I'm changing it again. I'm 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 liking the way it's shaping up, but we still got a ways to go, obviously. Um, and then what else we got here? Oh, yeah. So every year at the start of the year, I kind of like to do a little bit of like, a, you know, uh, I call it a purge, but it's just like removing and getting like decluttering, removing things, getting rid of shit you don't need anymore. And just like, you know, because o- over time you accumulate a bunch of shit, right? And you're like, well, I have more things now that I need space for. So do I really need this shit that I have here? Or is it just like something I could get rid of? Or like in some instances, it's like I have a box with stuff in it. But the box I could get rid of and just put the shit in that box somewhere else. So it could, you know, make more space and take up less room and all that kind of thing. So I just that's kind of that's kind of how I spent my entire day yesterday is just like reorganizing, moving, getting rid of purging, you know, so. That was that was my Sunday. Uh, that's what I did yesterday. Um, made made some more progress with that. Although that being said, I still <laughs> have a way have a ways to go. But you know, anything's anything's you know a start is better than nothing, right? Like anything is better than nothing. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much been my week. Uh, I didn't really. I was wanting to watch some movies, but I didn't. I just you know you ran out of time, man. I, I got to watch Cobra Kai though, and that was, as I said earlier, great. So I can't wait to talk about it here soon enough. But go ahead, Josh. How how was your uh, how was your week? It was good. I I played a little bit more of Ready or Not. Still enjoying it, although it's kind of taking the the back burner here since we got into Zomboid a little bit. Um, so I've been playing some more of that. Enjoy it. Can't wait for more to get added to it. Um, as well. Uh, played some Phasmophobia. First time I've played Phasmophobia in, like, 
I fucking like a couple of years or whenever we last played it as a big group or last time, like the first time we all played it, I guess, because I, I didn't revisit it after the updates. It's so I, I'm still having fun. It's still fun to get in there and just play with your friends and get scared. So been playing that a little bit on occasion. Uh, Played some Among Us with the group for, for our New Year's little get together thing that we do. Uh, so we were played some Among Us. Also played some golf with friends. I forgot to put it in my to do list, but uh, I forgot I forgot to it. put it there too because yes. you said New Year's Among Us. I was like, oh wait, we did play golf on New Year's. Yeah, we played golf I too. I, I forgot totally to put forgot. it in here. Uh, but yeah, we I remember Among Us. Friends, yeah. that game's fun, man. I like that game. It was fun. It, that whole night was just a blast. Um, Even though that game be fucking doing you so wrong oh my sometimes, Lord. man. I, I hate that. Sh- I hate, fucking hate it sometimes. But it's I get overall, I get toxic I really when I play golf. <laughs> uh, but it was fun, and Among Us was also fun. I got imposter like three times in a row, um, Damn. which was a little. A little rough. Hang on, let me fix Daniel's camera for him real quick. Um, and uh, yeah, so that was fun. Uh, I watched. Oh wait, I've also been playing Zomboid. I'd be playing Zomboid right now if we weren't doing Cantina. I've put eighteen uh-huh. hours in Zomboid the past uh, week, so like I've played it a lot. I've been having a lot of fun with it. But my axe broke last night, and I don't know how I'm ever going to get it fixed. And I'm going to be heartbroken if I can't find another one, because that axe was awesome. <laughs> uh, I might need to try some different weapons, though. Um, so, yeah. So I've been having a lot of fun with Zomboid. It's the first time I've ever really gotten into it. Like, I bought it for... I don't remember who I bought it all for. I feel like I gave Daniel a copy, and, like, some others a while back. And, like, we never tried it. And then this update came out, and, like, we're all playing multiplayer again now, and it's awesome and fun, so... I mean, this is my first time really, it. really playing the whole game because, like, yeah, Same, Josh gifted really? it to me in like a while back. I forget when, but it was been a while, and I just haven't really played. Like, I played it like before I had started playing it again with it with everybody. Now, my Steam said I had played it for fifteen minutes, but like, that, I did I did not play that game for fifteen minutes. It was just like I opened it, I tried it out to see what it was, but I hadn't really, you know, I didn't really mess with it a whole lot. And then now that we've actually been playing it, it's been it's been good. It's been fun. But um, yeah, yeah, it's a it's a, it's a neat little game, man. So it, it's cool that they added multiplayer and and, and you know whatever else they added. Because I mean, I, again, er, everything's new to me. Because I don't I don't really I haven't played a whole lot, like I just said. I hadn't either. Yeah. So that's that's fucking fun. Um, watch Boba Fett. Want to see more Boba Fett? Having a lot of fun with Boba Fett. Uh, I'm not saying much in Boba Fett because we're going to do a show on it at some point. Um, I watched Moneyball. Have you ever seen the movie Moneyball, Daniel? With, uh, uh, I don't Brad believe Pitt I have. It? I don't believe I have. So it's a sports movie about um, baseball. And it has mm. Brad Pitt and Jonah Hill and Philip Seymour Hoffman in it. Um. Yeah. Like and I've heard way, of it, but I I don't even I didn't know who was in it or I didn't know like you know I, I you should check it out I think it, you'd but... like it especially since we're like I know you're not huge into baseball but it is a sports movie so I feel yeah, like yeah, you I mean, can get I, something I, out I, of it I mean I I do like baseball but it's just, you know I'm just not as into it as other sports yeah. or like or maybe yeah. like as much into it as you are probably so yeah, I re- yeah. I recommend checking out Moneyball it's a good movie um yeah uh. But it's kind of about uh, Billy Bean and like their whole new system of recruiting players, trying to do it with like what little money they have. It's really cool. Um, recommend checking it out. I'm trying to remember what day I watched it because I'm starting a 2022 spreadsheet of all the things I watch, play, and all that stuff. And then probably at like the end of the year, at the very last cantina, I'm gonna go through it and like maybe talk about it on the show. So. Uh, I think I talked about this with you in Discord the other night, Daniel. I was like, I'm just going to make a spreadsheet and everything I watch and play, I'm just going to put it in there that I've played this and watched it and all that stuff. Um, so I, I, don't I, feel like, <laughs> yeah. I feel like I should do something like that, but I just, I'm just like, let, letterbox, watch this movie. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> TV show, TV time. And then I don't yeah. really have one for games, so, you know. 
yeah, it's uh, I don't know why I thought I just thought yeah, this will be cool. We'll do it at the start of the year, then at the end of the year, I have one. So, um, maybe you should send me some of the template for that, man. Maybe, maybe I should, uh, maybe I should I'm, a, I'm just gonna make one because I don't know if there is a template for what I want to actually do. <laughs> I was looking, oh, okay. I was like, I was like, I was trying to find one, I really was trying to find one because I was like. So what it's just gonna I think it's just gonna be a basic ass spreadsheet that's like, all right, I played this, I watched this, and I watched this in like three different columns. I think I think that's what yeah. I'm gonna do. Yeah, um, it's all good. Yeah, I mean shit, if you do that, let me fucking send it to me. I'll I'll, I'll fucking I'll do it too. Fuck it. Yeah, yeah. Uh we'll fucking we'll share a spreadsheet. That way we can see what each other's doing. Um, hey. Uh let's see. The last thing is I have new emotes on the channel. Um, Hell yeah. Yeah, that it was spur of the cool. moment. It was spur of the moment. Um, uh, so we have new emotes on the channel. We have uh, Josh and I know hi, Josh and I know cry, Josh and I know rip, Josh and I know rage, and Josh and I know raid. So we have all the, the emotes. I'm posting them all in chat. That it wasn't planned at all to have the emotes. It was totally like I saw an artist, I liked his style, I messaged him, his prices were decent, and I was like, sure. Why not? We'll get some emotes made. I've I've had slots forever and not had any made other than the the purple burger that Daniel made me, which I'm gonna move to the follower um category because I have one more emote being made. It's gonna be Josh Nino Heart because I didn't have a heart emote. I was like, wait, I gotta have a heart a heart emote because I love everybody. So I'm gonna tell you, I I don't have one either, but <laughs> you know. Um, so those are the new emotes. I, I have so many emotes slots, but I gotta. Get I one know. Later. I know. It's like I have a bunch of follower slots that I need to put stuff in at some point. Um, but that wasn't planned at all. But like I was, as I added them in, I was like, maybe, maybe this will motivate me to start streaming again because I spent money to have emotes made. So, um, yeah, I, 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 I enjoyed them. The artist I had was is awesome. He was fast. He, um, he, um. Double checked everything with me first before I even paid, so it was a, a great experience. So he was like, he's like, "What do you want to base it on?" I was like, "Well, I have a logo." He's like, "All right, send me a picture of the logo." And then I'll be damned if he didn't make a little dude that looks just like my logo guy. So, um, that's that's awesome. Uh, so no e new emotes on the t on the Twitch channels. So if you want them, come subscribe. We appreciate your support. Yeah, dude. Um, and if you want the burger one, I'm going to move it into the free column for followers. So just come follow the channel if you want to use the burger emote when I move it later today. Uh, other than that, that's all I've been up to, really. I don't think there's been anything else other than Cobra Kai, but obviously we're going to be talking about that. So we can continue on. Uh, Daniel, if, you want, if we want to take our first step into the... Kingdom Two Crowns. I've been playing Kingdom Two Crowns. I forgot. I forgot uh, to put it on the uh, the do list. Uh, I played four hours of it and I enjoy it, and I'm gonna keep playing it. There you go. Two seconds. All right. Now we can continue. Sweet. All right. Let's go into the news. The news. The first news of 2022. The new year. All right. So again, there isn't a whole lot, but we're gonna get through these pretty quickly. Um. So let's go ahead and talk about it. So the first thing we have here is if you haven't already, you have like what three days? Yeah, you have three more days to pick up the Tomb Raider reboot trilogy for free over on the Epic Game Store. I grabbed them. Yeah. So you have until the sixth. I already have these and I already played them on Steam, but I picked them up anyway, because why not? Free, you know. Yeah. They're they're great games, they're free. Like I already again, I already have them on Steam, but if you don't have them, they're they're great. You should definitely get on that if you haven't. They got Tomb Raider, Rise of the Tomb Raider, and Shadow of the Tomb Raider all for free until January sixth. So you have until Thursday. They're giving you plenty of time to pick these up. If you don't pick these up, that is, I don't know what to tell you, man. That you you're, you're lost, man. Because these games are great. I recently played through these what last year. Yeah, last year at the beginning of last year, I think, or sometime. But anyway. Played through all of them, like all three in a row. They're great games. I recommend them all. They're all good. So definitely, definitely pick them up. Good stuff over at the uh, 
over at the uh, Epic Game Store. Um, yeah, yeah, get your free stuff. Go get it. But yeah, that's uh, that's the first one, and then oh, we have we have the winners of the Steam Awards. Yes, I threw this on here. Um, yeah, so I voted, but I didn't know who won. So this is gonna be interesting. Let's see, let's see who won then. All right. Yes, we have we have categories. So we'll start with the game of the year, which was Resident Evil Village. Oh, that one game won. of the year. I'm not uh, surprised about that one. So I, that, I voted. For, that's your I voted for Cyberpunk because I that's the only one that I play. Well, actually, I played New World and Valheim, but but like out of all of those, like. From what I played, I was like, you know what? I like Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk has been getting a lot of shit. And I had a great time with it. So I voted for Cyberpunk. Okay. Although, I'm not surprised that Village won. Because I thought this Village was going to win Game of the Year at the Game Awards. Mm-hmm. So, if you guys remember that. So, I'm not surprised at all. But for me, Cyberpunk was just a really fun, fun game. And uh, I just... I'll be honest with you. I don't know why Valheim or New World are on here. Or even, or even Forza, to be honest. But hey, okay. Hey, all right. The 2021 VR game of the year is Cooking wait, Simulator wait, wait. VR. Before you continue, did you? What did mm-hmm. you vote for? I didn't actually vote. I didn't vote oh, on anything. Did. No, I forgot. Oh damn. <laughs> okay, because I, I was gonna say, I, yeah, I, I voted on all of them. All right. Well, okay. Well, Josh didn't vote. I did. I didn't vote. I'll let you guys know. I'll let you guys know my votes after Josh announces the winner. So I forgot cooking, to vote. Or, or VR game of the year. He said cooking simulator VR. All right. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. So I voted for Sniper Elite VR on this one, and it did not win. <laughs> now I don't uh... have any VR, but I was like, well, out of all of these, I feel like Sniper Elite would probably be the coolest one. You know. Yeah. But honestly, I could see Cooking Simulator VR being, being fun too. So that this one again that doesn't surprise me. All right. Uh, next up, we have the Labor of Love, which I guess is uh, this game's been out for a while. The team is well past their debut, well past the debut of their creative baby. But being the good parents they are, these devs continue to nurture and support their creation. The game to this day is still getting new content after all these years. And the winner of that award was Terraria. Terraria, not surprised, not surprised. I voted for No Man's Sky though, because they like they keep pumping shit out. Like I, honestly, know, if I was gonna vote, I would while. also vote for No Man's Sky. So um, yeah, that, that's who I voted for. They did not win, but you know what? Terraria is also a solid choice, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. Uh next up is the Better with Friends Award, which is obviously like co-op games. And the winner mm. of that award was It Takes Two. Which one game well, here at the Game Awards? I'm, I'm gonna be a little, I'm, I have a technicality with this one, man. Mm-hmm. It says better with friends. You can only play with one friend on this one. All right, <laughs> all right, guys. That is that should be disqualified immediately. I voted for Halo Infinite because that game is fun to play with friends. All right, because you, you can play with more than one friend. All right. You know what's funny? I'm I'm looking at this and I didn't even realize Halo Infinite is on the list because the biggest thing about Halo says season one. Season one, Heroes <laughs> it of does, Reach. Yeah. It doesn't even see it. I can't even hardly see yeah. it. Oh my goodness. I feel like another one. If I had the game, I feel like I I would have probably maybe voted for Back for Blood too, but I don't have that yet. So I was like, well, can't really vote that. And oh, and then Valheim's on here, which I I get. I know people like playing Valheim. With friends and stuff. You know, I don't know, dude. I, I was not like the biggest fan of Valheim, to be honest. It what didn't. It didn't that grab game me didn't like some me. of our other games do. Yeah, that game didn't grab didn't hit me like I like some of the other survival games we play. Like it it's one of the weaker ones for me. Like I just I don't know. I I, I thought I would like it more, but I just I didn't it didn't uh it didn't grab me like the other ones. So anyway. Uh Back for Blood, I would have voted for it if I had it. Probably, and if I, you know, played with other people, but Halo, out of all of these, Halo Infinite was the one that, you know, now I remember when it first came out, there was like a full ass team of us, like 12, 12, 11 people playing all on one team. Remember that? That was, that's crazy. That's why I voted for Halo. And again, it takes two, you can only play with one other person. There is no friends. It's play better with a friend because it's just you and one other person. But anyway, I'm just giving it shit. I, <laughs> it won game of the year, all right? I, I can I, I can give it some shit. It's got know. it's gotten its accolades, yeah. Yeah. Uh I also haven't played it, which I do want to play it, but I just I haven't, haven't played it either. Anyway. But anyway, what's next, Josh? Next up is outstanding visual style. 
Mm. Um, which Forza Horizon oh. Five won that. Um, okay, so I actually voted for for Forza and it won on this one. I I watched people play sense. Forza. It's a gorgeous game. Like yeah, it is again. I haven't played crazy. it either, but everything I've seen for this this Forza game is that it looks absolutely gorgeous. It's ama- it, the like visually it is tough to beat. Like looks wise, like it is a great looking game. So yeah, I had to. I feel like it made sense to vote for Forza on this one out of all the, out of all the the options that were given. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so, so hey, I at least got one winner that I voted <laughs> for. Hey. Uh, next up, we have most innovative gameplay. Um, Deathloop mm. wins this award. Um. So, most innovative gameplay means the designers of this game are at the front lines of creative experimentation, bringing a fresh perspective and brain-breaking surprises. The game delighted, inspired, entertained with nudists never played before. Um, So, I haven't played Deathloop. Um, Did not grab me. But if I was going to vote, they on this, on this, I should really read out everybody that's on the fucking nominations, I guess. Inscription, 12 minutes. Uh, Mon Cage, Death Loop, and Mon Luke Cage. Hero were all the yeah. um. So nominees. I voted for. I, I so again I haven't played for any of these, but I was like, you know what, twelve minutes, why not? So I voted for I, twelve minutes. I did play Loop Hero, and Loop Hero is fun. Uh, Loop Hero is literally you have a hero who runs around a giant map in a circle, fighting enemies the whole time. It's almost like hmm. a game you can idle and play, but I enjoyed it. I thought it was great. Um. Uh, moving on, <laughs> the 2021 best game you suck at. This oh, is the game boy. that rewards persistence and is not for the faint of heart. It's the toughest game we've ever loved. So the nominees for this one were World War Z Aftermath, which, by the way, I think you can get free if you have Prime right now on Twitch. Um, mm. Naraka Blade Point, Neo Two, Age of Empires Four. In Battlefield 2042. And the winner of this uh, award was Neo 2, the complete edition. So, uh, I haven't checked out uh, most of the games on this list. I have, well, and that's not true. I've played World War Z and I've played Battlefield. Yeah, but I've never played, played Naraka, here. Neo, or Age of Empires, really. I voted for Battlefield because, you know, why not? It was the releasing game that we had been playing. <laughs> and uh and every time I played it I would get my ass whooped, so you know. Fuck it. You know I don't normally play like those Dark Souls y types games. I do kinda want to check out Neo and Neo 2 at some point because there's fucking samurai and stuff, so mm. kinda wanna check that out maybe one day. It's kind of the same as that other one. What is it called? Um Sekiro, that one. Sekiro, yes, thank you. That's yeah. the one I was thinking of. That's where my brain immediately went. No, yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking of. So I'm glad you got it right away because I was like, "Fuck, what, what else?" You know, yeah. But that, that's the one, yeah. Uh, all right, moving on. The 2021 best soundtrack. Uh, the nominees for this were Guardians of the Galaxy, Near Replicant, Persona Five Strikers, The Guilty Gear Strive, and Demon Slayer. The Kimetsu no Yaiba, the Hinokami yeah. Chronicles. You, you, you say that because I've never watched it. Um, and the yes. winner of this award was the Guardians of the Galaxy, which I hear has a crazy soundtrack. Crazy good. So soundtrack. I have not played the game, but I checked out the soundtrack, like you know, before the game came out. And that game does have a fucking killer soundtrack, dude. And I, I actually voted for it too. So hey, another winner for me. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, boy. I haven't heard the soundtracks for any of the other. Well, I've heard some Guilty Gear stuff, and the Guilty Gear music's awesome. Daniel, if you ever want to listen to some of the Guilty Gear soundtracks, you totally should. They're awesome. Um, yeah, sure. Next up, we have the 2021 Outstanding Story Rich Game. So, some days only a narrative heavy game will hit the spot, and this one packs a wallop. It's as gripping as any soap opera and as well tuned as a prestige TV screenplay. Um, the nominees were Life is Strange True Colors, Cyberpunk 2077, Resident Evil Village. Days Gone and Mass Effect, the Legendary Edition. And so, the winner was Cyberpunk 2077. What'd you vote for? Yeah. 
I so I'm I'm happy that Cyberpunk gets its recognition here because I do think it is a great story. Like I I I had a great time with it. I liked my ending. I I liked the way I like the game, all right? I, mm-hmm. I'm always going to I I'm always going to say good things about Cyberpunk because I had a good time with it, right? I didn't have the issues that everybody else did, so miss me with that shit if you, you know, if you got negative things to say about the game, you know. I I I get it. I get if you had like if the game didn't run well for you or whatever, that that's that's fair enough too, but I I thought everything else was good. So I'm glad it got its recognition, but I actually voted for Mass Effect Legendary Edition because it was my hey. first time playing the games, all three of them. And I had a great time playing the trilogy, man. It was good stuff. I played them all, all in a row, one, two, three. So I, so I was like, you know what? The game came out, you know, twenty twenty one. So fuck yeah, I voted for that. And uh, you know, that was my pick. But I'm glad that Cyberpunk is getting its recognition because yeah, it, it it is a good game. It is a good game. Cyberpunk is good stuff. So yeah. glad it won. But yeah, I voted for Mass Effect. Hey, I would have voted for Mass Effect as well. Although there's some, there's some, there's some, the heavy hitters are in here. I mean, Cyberpunk is, is good. Mass Effect's good. I hear people talk about Days Gone a lot. I hear people talk Days about Gone is good. I, I like it, but I, I like Days Gone. But I definitely, I would, I would go with Cyberpunk and uh, Mass Effect over that one for sure. Gotcha. All right, moving on to 2021 Sit Back and Relax Award. This game is the antidote to a busy day. It's smooth, it's relaxing, it lets, you, it lets your worries melt away. This game is your moment of zen. The nominees were Unpacking, Potion Craft, Farming Simulator 22, Townscaper, and Dorf, Dorf Romantic, Romantic, which... That actually looks like it's kind of my type of game. Anyway, the the, uh, the winner of the award was Farming <laughs> Simulator 2022. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I haven't played I any can, of these games. <laughs> yeah, I haven't played any of these, but I voted for Unpacking because I watched Paula yeah, play. We watched yeah. Paula play that. That's right. Okay. We did. <laughs> well, she also played Potion Craft too, but, you know. Yeah. Unpacking seemed like... We famous. watched Unpacking from, like, beginning to end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was... that. It, it was fun to watch. It was fun to watch, so... But yeah, I guess. I, but that's it, huh? That's, those are the, the, those are the awards. awards. All right. Uh, so out of all of those, I voted for I think at least two winners. Uh, I'm adding a game to my wish list. <laughs> I'm adding Dorf Romantic. This I was gonna cool. say Dorf Romantic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, there it is. 2021 Steam Awards. It's, hell yeah. Actually, I'm gonna add it to my cart because it's only nine dollars. <laughs> I'll just buy this later. <laughs> Uh, cool the steam awards awesome uh i forgot the vote (laughs) (laughs) whoops cool though all right what's next next up let's talk about uh something that i'm sure josh is has something to say about uh are you ready josh Square Enix's 2022 plans include blockchain games and token economies. Are you ready for the future of gaming to go into fucking NFTs and fucking all this other bullshit we don't want it to be? So anyway, Square Enix CEO Yosuke Matsuda uh, penned and published a New Year's letter on the official SE website unveiling the company's future initiatives. Based on the medium-term business strategy that was announced in 2020, AI and cloud research and single plant single player slash multiplayer blockchain games that prioritize token economies continue to dominate R and D's team's priority list. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, read some of what uh, was said in that, um, and this is from the quote. I realize that some people who in quotes, I play to have to play to have fun, and who currently form the majority of players have voiced their reservations toward these new trends, and understandably so. However, I believe that there will be a certain number of people whose motivation is to play and contribute, by which I mean to help make a game more the game more exciting. It is blockchain based tokens that will enable this. By designing viable token economies into our games, we will enable self sustaining game growth. It is precisely this sort of ecosystem that lies at the heart of what I refer to as decentralized gaming. Boy, I love those buzzwords. A major trend in gaming going forward. 
Um, Dude, miss me with this shit. Fuck off. I hate this trash. Why is it a thing? That's Get the rid of it. want to do. Well, I'm boycotting. Okay, I'm I'm over. I don't like this shit. Like they're always like, it's me. It's got a great deal of enthusiasm by a rapidly expanding user base. The only enthusiasm I see is people fucking hating this shit and you not listening. Everybody yeah. from Kickstarter who, who, to this. Who it. actually wants this? Like, what what is all this bullshit, dude? I don't know. I, I have not heard from a single person that I know that wants this. I hope it crashes and burns. I really do. You know what I mean? Like I, I wanted to crash and burn. I miss when that. the horse armor was like the big thing we were all mad about. Like fucking horse it? armor. Like this is like I I it's fucking stupid. Um. Yeah. It. it, it I. I. It, I don't know, man. I. I. I don't like it either. It doesn't make any fucking sense to me, but. But hey, man, buzzwords, right? Uh, yeah, I lo- the whole fucking that's <laughs> the whole explanation is buzzwords. I'm richer than you, so you should listen to me. I know exactly what this is about and why you're gonna love it, even though <laughs> I'm you gonna don't. Say this bullshit word, you know, to make you think we're actually doing something here. But every you know CEO is fuck out you. of touch with the player base. Please go fuck yourself. <laughs> we can move on. I- yeah, hey, I have no words. Chidio Kojima hints at working on two upcoming games. So he ended his he ended up tweeting his 2022 plans a week before the release of uh, Famitsu's New Year's Ambitions feature. Uh, so he tweeted this on January 1st, saying, "This year, I'm going to start a new work in earnest." And move to the next level of experimentation with a radical project. Which, let me pause right there. I'm going to move to the next level of experimentation with a radical project. Ain't, ain't most of this shit already fucking that's, next yeah, level no, radical that's fucking... Was, that's what fuck? I was sitting here like... What, what are you doing? What do you mean? What does it mean, Kojima? Anyway, let me, let me continue the, the quote here. I'm also hoping to get the video game, the video team going. And I may start doing something like a radio project. So he seems to be working on four main projects in different levels of development and progress, two of which appear to be games or at least games related in the in the new work he's beginning. And the radical project that's evolving more this year. Uh, the other two things he's working on seems like they're audio and uh, video. Uh, But yeah, I just I just think it's crazy he's talking about radical when it's like isn't he already there? Like what, what, what? he's always done radical things. Is like the thing. Like why could you move next? Like, is Kojima literally gonna come to my house and like beat me up <laughs> and like put and then like stick me in a VR headset and be like, all right, here's the new radical idea. You need to play this game while I beat the shit out of you. Like I don't understand how much crazier you can get. Like he's <laughs> he made a game where you're a mailman. <laughs> In a post-apocalyptic Which, world. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of his of his work, to be honest. Like, I don't really... I know people, you know, fucking, you know, lose their minds over everything he does, but I just never have really, you know... Like, I've never even been a Metal Gear guy either, to be honest. But anyway, I... Didn't he a while back say something about wanting to see games that changed in, like, real time? Like something crazy, like I guess is that maybe the radical thing he's talking about? Maybe. Like making That's a game sure. that like changes like on the spot, like constantly all the time. I don't know. I I, I could have sworn it was something. I'll give something Kojima this. He's a really interesting dude. <laughs> I guess. Uh, yeah. Uh, even though I'm not like a super fan. And he yeah. always wanted to be a movie director or creator than a video game guy. I'm re- I know that. Uh, he's always he's huge in the movies, so interesting. I I'm curious. <laughs> I don't want to see what these radical things are. <laughs> I'm sure we'll find out soon enough, man. It's gonna be Death Stranding two. <laughs> Can you imagine this movie? So Loki, that's funny. <laughs> Uh, uh, I have nothing else to say on Kojima. Yeah, I I don't either. Uh, the last piece of thing that I have here is that the Halo Infinite lead narrative designer is leaving 343 
or three four three industries to pursue a new opportunity. Uh, he's going to be uh joining Riot Games, uh, apparently. Now. Uh. And, and and yeah, this is all just in a month, like a un- little under a month since the re- release of the the whole the full game. Um, well, apparently things are not super bad between them. Uh, but he was the narrative designer, you know, for for Halo Infinite. Um, if you go over to his Twitter, that has stuff that he worked on. Like it wasn't just it was not just the main story missions or the cutscenes and all that stuff. It was you know more than that. Um, like for example, like some of the things the grunts say, you know, the enemies. Mm-hmm. Um, and 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 the like. Um, but yeah, uh, like I said, it's a bit of a bit of a slower news week because. You know, it's the the first it's just week time. of the year, yeah. so there isn't really a whole lot to do or, or to talk about right now. But um, you know, yeah. But that's that's pretty much uh, that's pretty much what we got for the uh, the the news, the gaming news. Unless you got mm-hmm. anything else, Josh. Let me, let me just double check and see if anything has dropped. We just while we've been on and haven't looked. Um. Mm. Because that, does happen, that yeah, does happen sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. While we're while we're playing, uh, while we're playing, uh, or while we're playing, while we're while we're doing this uh, podcast, sometimes news will drop in the middle of it, and it's like, oh shit, you know. But I got news for you. <laughs> There's no news. <laughs> I mean, that's not news to me, my friend. I knew that already. Uh, it would it would have it would have would have been news of is if there was actual news, you know. But anyway. All right, we, we can, can move, move on, on to TV news. We only got like two things, and then I'm just gonna spoil alert you guys. There is no movie news this week because <laughs> there just isn't any. So, all right, so we have two things. We have uh, um, the Umbrella Academy is returning this year. Cool. Let me get a. I'll show you the poster they have. They uh. They tweeted out a thing that says 2022, and then they have since replied to it with other like little character posters. They have a number one, a number two, a number three, a number four, a number five, a number six, a number seven. That is all from the Sparrow Academy. Which is, uh, you know, the big thing for the next season of of the Umbrella Academy. Um, so yeah, they, they they've been like dropping character posters and whatnot. Which you know, we're gonna we're gonna find out who these uh, people are in uh, the next uh, the next season. I I thought that was an interesting way to end the uh, season two. You know. After all they had done, I don't know if you've have you have you been have you been watching watch the it. show, John? I've watched it. I'm caught up. Yeah, I uh, yeah. I like it, but I feel like I'm liking it a little less than I did at the start. But we'll see how it is with the new season. See if it gets me. Back yeah, we'll see how it is with season three. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, cool. More uh, good to see that's coming back. Yes. And then the other thing we have here is a Peacemaker official trailer number two. I have not seen this yet. I was going to react to it, but I was like, you know what? I'll just watch it on the podcast. It's fine. Yeah, we'll do it out right here. I got it up. So whenever you're ready, you can stay. I got a live one. I got it. Ready? Three, two, one, play. All right, kids. And that's how I defeated one of the world's most dangerous villains. This is coming out Deep soon, fists. by the way. My Desert Eagle. Oh, oh damn! Launchers. Eat peace, Eat motherfuckers. peace, motherfuckers. Any questions? Have you met Wonder Woman? She did spend an entire party IFing me from across the room. Sick, dude. Dude, I said effing. <laughs> hey. She said effing, dude. It's I fine. love John Cena, dude. Peacemaker. I was hesitant to bring you onto this team, but right now the world needs a son of a bitch. 
and you're the only one. Ew! Ow! No, you don't have to call me Peacemaker. You can call me Chris. <laughs> Just because you're handsome doesn't mean you're not a piece of shit. Think I'm handsome? Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> what a fucking this goofball, man. This doesn't officially exist. You want to do this job? You can't balk ever. Oh, shit! Listen, I can help. I'm stellar with weapons in combat. You don't have to shoot people after I already killed them. Right. Fucking game day, bitches! Aren't you guys being a little nonchalant about all this? Are you insinuating there is a wrong time and a right time to rock? Fuck yeah! You don't understand what we're up against. We need every hand on deck. Is that an eagle? It's an eagle eat eagle. Oh, no, no, don't poke his ass. What's wrong with your bird? Such a good, handsome boy. What the hell? Dude, we're saving the world. <laughs> it's everything we've ever wanted. Oh, shit. Fuck, dude. Fuck yeah. What if this? Tell me this is going to be nutty, man. Yep. Shit. How do you like that? I like it. I like it a lot. I don't give a fuck. What? <laughs> give it all you got. <laughs> <laughs> oh fucking, no! Fucking John Cena, dude! No. What the hell? I'm not giving this guy anything. Uh, maybe you could just give him a little. Jesus! Hey, sweet cheeks. Can you take my order real quick? Seriously, dude. She had cherubic cheeks. It's a compliment. Sweet cheeks is your butt. No, it's not. It is. It's like calling somebody I don't know sugar tits. Totally inappropriate. Tits are way too big to be sugar tits. Sugar tits are like smaller, perkier tits, like yours. Uh. Technically, I think you may have sugar tits too, but somehow that also feels inappropriate. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow that dude. looks hilarious. Yeah, uh, no, that's that's uh, gonna be out uh, pretty soon. I think. Uh, uh, fuck. I want to say it's like the fifteenth or something, fourteenth maybe. I don't know. It's like it's like real soon. Says thirteenth. Thirteenth. I knew I was. Somewhere around the range. So ne next next Thursday, not this upcoming Thursday, but the one after. Cool. Yeah, I'll I'll be checking that out for sure. Be watching cool. that, and then I'll, yeah, I'll me let too. You guys know what we think. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much the news. That that is the rest of it. There was again, there's just not a whole lot right now. You know, it's not. That's fine. That's cool. We're gonna move in the second half of the show. Then I don't think we need a break. Um. I am going to throw up our Cobra Kai Season 4 spoilers text, because we probably will spoil stuff. Oh, uh, we will. We will spoil stuff. So it's up there. Uh, I'll give you guys a couple minutes to file out if you haven't seen all of it yet. Um, do, 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 do. Um, so, yeah. Uh, we already said we loved it. I loved it. Um, Daniel loved it. Yeah, I, and I, I really did. I'm dying for more. Like I, I, <laughs> I was like, I'm like, I'm like the uh, the uh, the Pablo meme from fucking Narcos. Like, can I have more? I want, I want more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like Dave especially you, yeah, the Dave Chappelle crackhead. Y'all got any more of that Cobra Kai? Okay, got any more of that Cobra Kai? Yeah. That's Dude, it. season four ended. And I was like, I'm ready for season five, ba or or yeah, I'm ready for season five, baby. Give it, give that, give me that shit. Yeah. Uh, uh, so yeah, sorry. Continue. Sorry. No, I just I, I felt the same way last season too. Like the way season three ended, I was like, yo, I'm ready for season four. I just, I just, I love the show, man. It's so good. It, 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 it amazes me that they continue to like do like this awesome ass show. Like some of the things they they pull off, that they continue to surprise and 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 give us good quality, like season after season, man. Like it's so, so good, man. It's so good. I really enjoyed. I really enjoyed it. I do too. Um. It's it's hard to like when you watch it. It's like hard to stop, right? Like it's like I'm watching, and then like I know I need to take a break and like play some video games for my friends right now. But it's like, but just one more episode. Like like I watched episode one, right? And we were fixing to play a game, and I was like, I'm gonna watch at least one episode of Cobra Guy because yeah. my nieces were here and I was busy. So 
uh, when they went home. I was like, I'm gonna watch at least one episode, and it was like, I don't want to stop. I wanna, I wanna keep watching. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, but yeah, I just enjoyed the show so fucking much. Um, uh, and we got fucking Terry Silver, man. We got yeah. Uh, he, he was uh, he was reluctant to come back in the first. Literally, the opening scene of the of the first episode of the season is he's getting the call from John Priest and he's playing his piano. He answers and you know he hears that it's Priest and he's like, "Nope," hangs up right away and continues playing his piano. Do you like he's <laughs> he's unbothered? He doesn't give a shit, man. But but oh, but oh man, doesn't stay that way for long. Also, um. The, the, some of the fights this season are like some of the best that the show has ever had. Like, um, spoilers: the the Daniel Johnny fight that happens is <laughs> is is great. That um, was pretty good, yeah. Uh, super spoilers for the very end. Uh, Hawk Robbie fight was fantastic. Oh yeah, uh, dude. That was good. I, I I was like, yo, Josh is gonna love his boy Hawk over here. Fucking... Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> all right. All right. I, I know I'm skipping ahead. Okay. It particularly is... after what happened to him this season. I, yeah. I know. I know you were gonna love. I'm gonna a love big fan moment. of Hawk, and Hawk gets his redemption this season. He he wins. He wins the tournament. He get he yeah. gets the title, and I'm like, I'm so glad. That he got it, and I here's the thing: I knew he was gonna win too, cause just cause of how the fight was placed, I was like, yeah. I'm pretty sure Hawk's gonna win here. But I didn't care. The fight was great; it was fantastic. Um, yeah, the way they were setting it up, cause like they split the divisions, right? It's like there's like the mm-hmm. girls tournament, and there's you know the boys one now, right? So, yeah, yeah, it was it was interesting. And then you know Miguel was out for the for the you know the fight because he just you know he pulled a muscle and can do it yeah he's not his story this season miguel's story it's not really been like it's not been focused on the tournament necessarily right he's no. like his story is 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 with johnny and johnny his mom his, mm. and his dad right yeah those that's are like his the main, story the, those are the main things driving yeah driving him and then like you know yeah which is yeah. fine. It wasn't bad. It was just like, I didn't figure he would make a big impact at the tournament. You know, other than like, he's a returning champion and, and stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I mean, it, yeah, they, I, I, I figured they would like have somebody else win. Cause it's like, you know, if he wins every season, then it's like, okay. Even though Miguel is my favorite, one of my favorite characters. Nah, yeah, nah. It's like, all right. Yeah. I, I was like, it makes, it makes, Total sense to have them to have Hawk come in here and just whoop some ass, man. Yeah. And Robbie, and Robbie gets fucked again, dude. Get get racked, dude. I uh, liked uh, I liked Robbie's story this season. Yeah, uh, him, no, him yeah, and, it was interesting with him and Kenny, right? Yeah, him and Kenny, and Kenny, Kenny goes full Joker. That smile he does at the end, I was dude. like, that kid's got yeah, great facial acting. Like he looked, he looked straight evil. I was like, I mean, I was taken aback by it. I was like, wow, this kid's good. <laughs> um, yeah, it was. It, actually, I speaking of Kenny, I like the new characters in the season. I did him, too. And then the uh, the girl from Eagle Fang. What was her name? Fucking oh, the the, uh, the the Asian girl Devon, that, that Devon Lee. Is that it? It was Devon. Is, is it? Yeah, I, I know her last name is. was Lee, but I don't know what her first... I forget what her first name was. Yeah, she, she was, was cool on the too, debate team. Was, yeah, the debate team girl. She was intense, dude. She was ready to whoop some ass, dude. That was, it was great. I, I liked yeah. her a lot. And then, See, like, I loved Kenny her. Like, like, even though she got knocked out of the tournament, she's like, I'm coming back next year. I'm going to whoop all these bitches' asses or something like and that. Even that though, and even though Anthony isn't a new character, he kind of feels like a new, kind of like a new character because he hasn't really been... Yeah. much of a factor in previous. He's just seasons, been a snot know? for like three seasons, really yeah, four he's seasons. Been a, he was a snot he's been, in this he's season been a, too. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he was he was a bully. He was a he, he was you know he, he didn't really do shit previously before this season, but at least he got <laughs> a little bit more to do, you know, this time around. Yeah, and I think that's going to continue to grow in future season. And yeah, he seemed like to, when, at the end, he seemed to be learning a bit more and not being yeah, as much like of a when, snot. Uh, when Daniel was trying to get him to, uh, you know you know finally bring him into the the, the family 
the family karate man with you know talking about mr because he was talking about mr miyagi and how he doesn't have memories of him and whatnot and everybody Mm -hmm. else does it's an interesting dynamic yeah yeah like like, and the larusso's do kind of play favorites with the sam sorry I didn't mean to cut you off. I apologize. No, I was just gonna uh, say it was like funny with those the stories that like Daniel was saying, like, "Oh, you're the only one that ever got a hit on Mr. Miyagi, right? You kicked him in the face or something like that when mm-hmm. you were a baby or something." Yeah, I thought that was funny. Yeah. Um, um. Yeah, it was. Also, I found it really another thing I found interesting is you're talking about you know Robbie's story with Kenny and oh, oh Tori, dude, like Tori with 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 Robbie and then like Tori with with. Uh, uh, fuck with Amanda, you know, the mom, the, yeah. you know, the man, Daniel's wife, and Sam's mom, and you know, Anthony's mom. Yeah, Amanda LaRusso, sure, her and Tori. I thought that was a pretty interesting. We uh, get a little Amanda backstory, even about yeah. her, her dad having like an affair with her teacher. Yeah, and she was like beating their teacher's car with a bat or something, man. Mm-hmm. That was, yeah, that was, that was pretty nuts, dude. Um, um yeah, and Tori kind of gets. I'm not going to say she gets redemption because she doesn't get redemption, but she's like on the path to like figuring out mm. how to be better. Like she's somebody that is constantly dealt bad hands throughout. And that's the thing with this show is like, it's not really black and white. There are tons mm. of gray everywhere. And, and you're a kid, you're no. growing up and you change and, and things. And that's oh, a yeah. great thing about this show, especially in season four, because we get the mixing of styles and different things and how it's not like, yeah. Just one is necessarily better than the other. Uh, Johnny uses some Miyagi Do teachings. Daniel uses some Eagle Fang slash Cobra Kai teachings, especially when dealing with with Anthony, his son, and, at, at the end. Toward you know, he's like yeah, quiet. They all, they when he, went, kinda... he did the quiet thing, that was fucking. Oh, dude, weird. I I fucking you, I did. I love when Johnny does that shit. It cracks you up <laughs> every time, dude. I love it. Like when the the debate team girl got got there, or whatever, and they were talking. He's like. That shit cracks me up every time, dude. I love it so much. But yeah, when Daniel went like, you know, he was starting to yeah, get Anthony to be like, yo, you're gonna you're gonna fucking listen to me, dude. That like like I had enough of your shit, dude. Like we're getting serious now. That was good. Um Oh, there's so much to talk about. Yeah, but in ter- back to the mixing of the styles, it was cool. Like, you know, Samantha wanting to learn, you know, Eagle Fang with the, you know, tornado kick and everything and and then, uh, you know, uh, Daniel and Johnny trying to, you know, understand each other's styles because, you know, Miyagi-Do is more defensive and, and Eagle Fang is more offensive. And, uh, you know, just mixing the two styles. And I thought it was interesting how, like, remember when Daniel was talking to uh, Robbie? He's like, yo, if you if you go down this this path or whatever, like, you may win, but do you really win? It was like something... It wasn't quite those words, but like it was that that's kinda my like paraphrasing of it. Like, you know. He was telling them like you need to be, you know, careful with, with, with you know, uh, I'm gonna do whatever it takes to win at all costs, because you might you might win that way, but like what do you really, you know mm-hmm. what do you really get out of? Because as we saw at the end, I'm not even gonna say spoiler because there's a spoiler on the screen. So if you're watching yeah. this and we've we've been spoiling for you already anyway, but Tori wins the girls tournament. And she's like walking with the trophy and she walks down the hall and she sees Terry Silver like paying off the ref and shit. Mm-hmm. And she and she kind of is like, yo, you know, like, like, it, like, is it is it worth winning at, at that rate? You know, like, yeah, you won. But like, would you have would you have won? If it was normal or did you win just because you were going to be you were going to win anyway, regardless? Because yeah. it was paid off, you know. And it was important for her character because she even says earlier, it's like, I want to win because it'll be the, the like the one of the yeah. most important moments in my life because like she gets so much shit. Like it would have been something that was totally hers. And, and now like, she Terry won, but it's, but it's tainted. That. Yeah, because yeah, so. Terry paid off the rest. Um, um which, which by the way, speaking of Terry, dude, from the start, he had a he had a fucking crazy arc this season, man. Mm-hmm. Oh like my god! From where we see him at the start, being called Terrence with you know, the 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 fancy the fancy life that he's been living and shit, and then just to the end point, at the end of the season, is you know, 
just nuts, dude. I also liked how they, how they, I, when he was talking to Kreese and he's like, yo, are you in the, what the hell was I doing in the 80s, man? I was like, cocaine, raised Re- fuel, cocaine, messing, revenge. Yeah, <laughs> messing with a teenager over a karate turn. This sounds crazy up as I'm talking about it. I love that it. That shit though. was hilarious, dude. I yeah. thought it was so funny. Yeah, it all makes so much. I, I love how they like bring, I love how they utilize the movies and tie them into the show. Like I, every time you see like flashbacks and then like all that stuff, I love it. It's so good. Did dude. you? They do that shit. Did so you well. realize that they used a deleted scene? They used some deleted scenes from the first movie. The whole pie they, thing that wasn't in the first movie. It's a deleted yeah. scene. <laughs> they they do that a lot. They've done that with it's previous so cool. seasons too, where they just use like deleted scenes for stuff. Yeah, I love it. It's it's fucking awesome, man. And yeah, just man, it's so good the way that they, the just the you slowly see the conflict between Crease and Silver build up, you know, because mm-hmm. he's like, oh, I, everybody has a weakness. And Crease is like, yo, wait, what? I don't got a weakness. What you talking about? Why, 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 why are you saying this in front of our, you know, in front of our students? Like, I don't got no damn weakness. And he's like, oh, oh yeah, you do. You, you know, everybody has one. Even, even, even you, you know. Mm-hmm. And then, like, I figured out that Johnny was Crease's weakness before it happened, you know? Because, like, there's some yeah. things you can t- kind of tell. But, like, I don't... When it's when it's done as well as this show does stuff, I don't give a fuck, dude. Like, I just... I, I, I love it. I'm there for the ride, man. And it's... Yeah, it was just seeing Terry, like, descend into madness from, like, trying to, like, please Crease to just being like, you know what? You are my weakness, man. Let me get rid of your ass. That's I'm crazy. shedding you. I love that he says, yeah. "I'm I'm shedding you like a snake sheds its skin." Like yeah. it was, it was such a good, good line, uh, and a great callback to to what Pobrakai is. And it makes me like, spo- spoilers: John Kreese is in fucking jail for beating up Stingray. Stingray came, came back, back, dude. He came <laughs> back, fucking Stingray, dude. <laughs> He got the shit beat out of him from Terry, oh, but God, I felt damn. bad. I felt bad when Terry started beating the shit out of him. You want to be a Cobra Kai? You're gonna have to do something for me. Pop, pop, pop! They beat your ass and put you in the hospital. <laughs> put him so in you a can tell him that Crease fucking did this to you. Mm-hmm. And what's funny is like that happens, and then it moves on, and I'm like, well, I guess he just got the shit kicked out of him. And then he's yeah. they show him in the hospital in a coma, and I forget about all of this happening. So when we finally get to the reveal for me at the very end of the, the show or close to the end of the show, it's a surprise uh, for him to wake up and be like, this is what happens to Kreese. Oh, my God. Terry Silver is psychotic again. Loved it. Great villain um, this season. Yeah, uh, yeah, he, he was he was really good, man. Like it just again, this his whole arc from living his, you know, high life, the you know, to how he was used to doing it. And from the end of the season, it's just crazy, dude. Like, that whole character arc is fucking nuts, man. Kreese has become so obsessed with revenge, he brought Silver back. And then Silver has stabbed him in the back. Yeah. Uh, I love the whole end where Kreese is getting arrested and Silver's like, John, what have you done? I'll help you. I'll help you with any way I can. I'll take care of Cobra Kai while you're gone. I'm like, oh, he's yeah. such a, he's such a snake. <laughs> oh, it's so good. It's yeah, he, they they did that so fucking so well, man. Oh. Um. And then yeah, they're they're different characters are different. Like like Miguel is off to go find his dad now. Like he he's gone. He mm-hmm. he, he left to go in search of his father, which uh, according to the mother, he doesn't even know he has a son. Yeah. So that'll be interesting. Johnny said he'd go find him. So we have that, those threads to go into next season. And then Daniel goes up to the Miyagi, uh, you know, you know, go, he goes to visit Mr. Miyagi. And then your boy, your boy makes a, an appearance there at the end, dude, to set up, yeah. uh, to help set up season five, man. They're they're gonna together. They're gonna. You, you thought Cobra Kai teaming up, uh, you know, with 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 Crease and and Silver coming together at at the end of last season was gonna be some. Not not Miyagi Do is getting getting reinforcements uh, this next season, man. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, yeah, when he was talking, I'm like, who's he talking? I'm, I'm like, I know he's talking to the tombstone, but like, there's something else going on here. And then it pans over and you see uh, fucking Chosen standing there. And I went, oh my God. <laughs> right? He's like, like chilling there. He's like, oh, I'm like, oh, I'm man. Like, First of all, I'm like, yes, but at the second the second of all, I was like, no, I want to see what happens now. <laughs> uh, that ending, I got chills. It was so good. Um, this, show, this show does cliffhangers well, and it's done it every fucking season that's every happened. Every season, dude. <laughs> every season. Like, how do they keep doing this? I don't, I don't get it. They're so good, dude. I don't know. Um... Yeah. Uh, so sp oh, speaking of, uh, well, go ahead. Oh yeah, I was just gonna say, like, uh, just to point out that Miguel and Robbie both have like two of the most emotional moments in this fucking show this season, which is like uh, oh, Miguel's dude. scene with Johnny in the fucking when he's drunk oh, and like my God. that dude. scene. I was like, oh, that's uh, that's heartbreaking, man. Oh uh, no, like that's, in his I, face. I was, I was, oh, I felt my. it too. I was like, oh. I felt, oh. Oh, it I hurt. was like, Johnny, no, 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 Johnny. Oh, he calls him Robbie, dude. I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. no. Oh, because this, this, up until this point, like, there's Miguel, uh, Johnny and, and Miguel's mom are trying to figure out how to tell him that they were, you know, they were together. And then, like, he, you know, he finds out and then they, they tell him and all that stuff. But he, Miguel's trying to get, you know, used to the idea of of that and, and getting accustomed to it and and all that stuff because you know he's like i don't want anything to change but things have changed because johnny is over there you know treating him differently now that he's you know mm. that that has that you know an official thing now with his mom so he didn't want that that scene that scene is made worse by the fact that earlier in that episode i think it's like robbie or one of the other characters says you're just a replacement for me with my dad or something like that. Like you're just a surrogate or something, something similar to that effect. And then that scene happens and it's like on oh, his face. Oh my God. It's heartbreaking. Yeah, it is. And then, uh, at the end of the show or at the end of this season, rather, uh, Robbie and, and Johnny's, uh, conversation that happens in the old Cobra Kai dojo is also really sad. He's like, I'm just, I'm tired of hating you. And they hug and stuff like that. And it's like, I was, I was thought I was taking care of this kid, Kenny. And now I see like, I've just turned, it's like looking in a mirror, you know, like that. Those guys are fantastic actors. Like, like it's really, really good. And I'm very curious to see, um, what happens and changes going forward in, uh, with those characters. Uh, because it seems like Ravi is like on the coming back to the light side a little bit, you know, and mm, yeah. especially with that. Um, but obviously, <laughs> my, my one of my favorite characters is Hawk. So, but yeah, what were you gonna say? Uh, no, nah, just it, all the all the changing of sides and allegiances and alliances and, and everything, man. It's just it's, mm -hmm. it's crazy, dude. There's so much of it in this show, and it makes sense because they're 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 playing kids and they are kids and they're and like when you're young like that it's you you're growing and changing and you don't really know necessarily who you are at that time so as you learn yeah. and change and that goes for all the character that's why it's like such shades of gray the older characters are set in their ways right and you see that with with uh daniel you see it with johnny you see it with crease like and then at the tournament they're like the kids kind of have to find their own way make it your style kind of thing and it's like that this sh I think that's where the show appeals to people that are fans of the old Cobra Kai movie that are grown now. It's like it's almost in a way of like watching this show will help you in a way understand your kids and your kids understand you why you act some of the ways you do and how at some point you kind of have to let them go and find their own path with what you've taught them. Um. Um. So it's it, that was kind of like what I was getting out of uh, especially that last episode. Uh, but yeah, the Daniel Johnny thing, they ended up, they worked together for a while, then it falls apart. And then at the end of this season, it looks like they've kind of buried the hatchet for good, which they do at the end of every season. So I hope that kind of, I hope it stays buried this time. 
because uh, it looks like they're I think it, it looks like they're setting up for like a split off with Johnny going to find Miguel and, and Daniel mm. staying home to fight more Cobra, Cobra Kai. Kai. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we have like a setup of Chosen and Daniel versus Terry Silver's Cobra Kai. Mm-hmm. And whoever Terry Silver brings in, because it's definitely yeah. that is mentioned. Yeah. It's like, I got some friends I can call. Like, who are we going to get? Are we going to get um, Barnes? Right from fucking, as well. Like I know his actors like huge on the on the on the thing, and we'll see. I'm very yeah, curious well, yeah, to see we'll, where we, we will are. see. Yeah, but yeah, uh, Miguel's off to Mexico to find his dad, and you know, may, maybe Tori and her storyline with her parents maybe will, mm-hmm. will will happen as well. And yeah, I just oh, and then the, the mo- uh, fucking we didn't even talk about Johnny and uh, and and Robbie. They had a, they had a pretty good. Uh, pretty good moment when Johnny goes back to the, uh, the old Cobra Kai place, you know, after, yeah, I this brought is, that is up. after, Oh, you did. Okay. Yeah. I was talking about that at the end of the show. That was one of the most emotional moments for me. Okay. Yeah, my bad, uh, my bad, my bad. No, you're good, but we can still talk about it uh, again. If you want, no, I was just, you have stuff to no, say. No, I, I just wanted to mention it. Cause it, it, was, it is know, a good moment. I love that moment when they go back. He goes like, back like, after the tournament and they're like, mm-hmm. you know, selling that location. Cause they're going to, you know, Terry Silver's got the money to expand and shit. Right. Oh, we're gonna have a fucking Cobra Kai in every block or whatever the fuck he says, you know? Yeah. So yeah, that was a good moment. Yeah, they're, they're definitely one of the, yeah, that one and then the the Miguel and then and, and Johnny one as well. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Um. Oh, and then I was gonna add on to cameo. Speaking of cameos, because we had Stingray, fucking uh, Aisha made a cameo too. Yes, you know? she did. She came back for seasons. a guest spot with, uh, uh, with Sam. You know, Sam went to go talk to her for a little bit and. I, I like the the things she had to say too, you know, like yo, you gotta like she she's using what she learned from karate into her real life, you know. She's like, oh, I I you know strike first, you know. I, she went, she saw somebody that she thought was gonna be like a bully to her, maybe or something like that, and then she just went up and talked to her first, and they became, in her words, besties now, you know. So that's you know, yeah. Sometimes it's all it takes, man. Especially at that age, dude. Like you know, in high school and like. You know, when you're younger and and in the, in those years, like middle school, high school kind of shit, like kids are fucking assholes, dude. Like you, you know, like we we uh we we we've all we've all been through that already, so we know how we know how it can be and how it is. So you, you know, kids are fucking little little shits, dude. Like you just you know yeah. So you gotta you gotta do your best to to you know maneuver your way through that, and and you know having stuff like. uh like using you know karate skills to to implement into your real life is I think is kind of cool you know yeah the way that 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 ended up paying off for Aisha yeah and I like um, that's what I like about the show is that it doesn't like even some of the Miyagi dos are shit they're shit in the hawk because uh, yeah. Hawk has been a shitty person uh, the kids at school are shit even though like some of them are are Eagle Fang and in Miyagi all Dose. of Anthony's like, uh, Al Anthony's little shithead friends are so they're little oh my god dude. that blonde kid I never that wanted to slap a kid, kid so bad so annoying, great annoying good job to that actor <laughs> oh my god I was like I somebody kick this kid's ass please uh, and fucking poor Kenny dude like he was just trying to play games the yeah, online game he was playing and he got tricked by all those all those other kids that's the shittiest fucking, fucking thing dress, dude fucking cosplaying to the, to go into the park and they you know i would dude i would hate to be a kid nowadays mm-hmm. with shit like that dude they put milk in his Cause, locker yeah because when i was when i was in school bro like or you know when we were in school fucking social media was not a thing to that extent nah. so we didn't have we didn't have to worry about fucking talking to i mean well i guess you could i guess you could have talked to somebody and not have them be who they say they are, but you know, to have your shit up on fucking the internet like in an instant like that, that would that that would suck. But anyway, poor kid, man, poor Kenny, dude. He was they 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 they, they did that to him, man. They turned him into that, though, you know. Yeah, yeah. he was getting bullied, yeah. and now he and then he was telling Anthony like, "Yo, you better watch out next school year because I won't be I won't be whooping your ass, boy. You better you better watch out." open season then he does that joker smile and like that kid yeah, he looks joker straight smile. he looks straight evil he was great that's a that's a fantastic young actor um uh i'm trying to think of what else to talk about uh 
Uh, I liked the the Robbie uh, the Robbie uh, Tory relationship. It doesn't feel forced. It feels like they kind of got to know each other and ended up becoming a couple, which we don't talk about a lot on the show because it's a little weird because they're young kids and relationships are. Weird. Yeah, uh, I mean, but it, it makes sense though. Like I said, they, but it was nice. a lot of they. You know, there was a moment at the uh, at the at the prom. Was it was it the prom or whatever? What was mm-hmm. it? Yeah, whatever, I think it was whatever that a prom where they were like, you know, there was because obviously Sam had has was with Robbie before and and Miguel was with Tori before, so you know it was mm-hmm. like the again the the mingling of, of, of you know the mingling and mixing of of the peoples. Um, uh, and then that caused some some drama and some rift. It led between... to a little fight. <laughs> yeah, and they all went into the pool, and fucking Sing Ray was like, "Yo, I got, got... <laughs> we're we going pool, jumping into the pool. Let's go!" And everybody starts jumping in the pool. Yeah. Um but that was that I, I, that was well done too. The the whole prom stuff and yeah, dude, for for being for as much of a dweeb as Dimitri is, man, for that girl to like him that much is is, is crazy too, dude. And she Dimitri, like flew away and flew yeah, back and stuff. And, she loves him. Um, yeah. It's nice. Uh, Dimitri and Hawks, Eli's relationship is, I like it a lot. Um, the, yeah, they're, Dimitri, they're brothers. Yeah. Oh, the like, binary, they're, they're binary brothers. Josh. Yeah. yeah, true. <laughs> you know, the binary brothers. Oh my God, when they showed that and I was like, oh yeah. my goodness, this is so bad, but I love this, it. It's, it's, so, so it's so cringy. But that was not my cringy moment. Remember, I told you we were talking off, mm-hmm. uh, you know, after we watched it, that I had a cringy moment. My, I'll tell you what mine was. So my cringy moment was when they were at the tournament and they brought out Carrie Underwood. Bro. I, I figured, like, oh I figured God. that was it. I was like, I bet this I is like, what Daniel hated. I was like, Please no, <laughs> I, dude. I'm glad it was over quickly because I was yeah. like, I want to skip this, dude. I was like, please, please, let's it's, not it's, overdo this. It's over quick. Um, apparently, she's a fan of the show. Which is um, fine. I, 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 uh, I, I, that's what I was thinking as I was watching. I was like, okay, they probably brought her in as a cameo because she's a fan of the show and, you know, whatever. But I was like, please, let's not make this go on for too long. But yeah, that was, that was my, my cringy, uh, I want to almost skip this type moment. But it, it didn't go on for too long. So it was fine. Uh, that, that didn't bother me because it wasn't super long. Although I did think this is weird <laughs> that Carrie Underwood would just show up at this random yeah, tournament. Yeah, it's like Carrie Valley. Underwood. Um, it, I, the whole the whole council, like the the, oh, the <laughs> they were talking shit about that one guy. They're like, oh, he actually did it. Oh, we he we, actually we never, pulled it off. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, he's like his, her, uh, her husband's a, a client, which is funny because her husband's a hockey player. And he's a dentist, so he was fixing his teeth because I got knocked out for hockey. <laughs> <laughs> that's that was, that was what's the um, this joke. Had, this the story has layers. <laughs> I, okay, I, I yeah, I didn't even that didn't even cross my mind because I I don't even I don't know who her husband is, so I didn't I the, didn't know that. That's... The cringy moment for me isn't like it was a it wasn't like a it was like the scene where where. Where Devon Lee kicks all the dudes in the in the crotch, that's oh, where yeah. I cringed because I'm a dude and that would fucking hurt and suck. So I was obviously like, why that was are cringy. We, I was like, why are we <laughs> kicking these dudes in the nuts? Like, what is this gonna do? Like, then Johnny's over like they got cups on, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh. I, I like how the I like how penis breath is like no 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 please no you know right, right before it happens like it's fucking funny. Mm. But uh, uh, yeah, no, that oh, I get you on that one. Yeah, I was like, uh, anytime I see somebody get kicked in the balls, I'm like, why, dude? Like, why? Yeah, because it's why, why there? Of all places, why there? Like, I, I get also, it. A little bit, but, I don't like it being played for laughs because you can get killed from being kicked in the nuts. So it can be a little bit of a dangerous thing. So I was like, eh, I guess uh, I wasn't crazy over that moment. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I was. I was wondering what yours was gonna be. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that made me be like, oh, I don't like this. Um, <laughs> I gotcha. Uh, what else is there to say? I'm trying to, it's a lot to remember. Uh, music oh, Hawk. Is, the music Hawk and the soundtrack is so great. Oh, yeah, yeah, Hawk. Because, again, Hawk we talked about how, how, how he won the uh, the tournament, but, you know, he, 
he went through some shit this season, man. Like even from the beginning when he was going to when Eagle Fang and and uh, Miyagi Do were together, and the the, the Miyagi Dos were like, "Yo, get your ass out of here, dude!" Like, don't like mm-hmm. go back to your Eagle Crew, or whatever they said, you know. And then he comes in and with then, a sledgehammer and stuff, and starts trying to build and stuff, which is awesome. Yeah, which is it's cool. Like and then, and then Cobra Kai fucks with him, and it it, it like kills his uh, morale, and then you know fucks him up mentally, and then fucking Daniel's even get... a shit to him at one point. He's like, "You've burnt bridges with everybody here. What do you expect?" I'm like, "That's such a shitty thing to say to a kid." I was like, "How could <laughs> you say that? I would never say that. That's horrible." I was like, "Wow!" Even Daniel went off. Dude. I was like, "Oh shit." Okay. I felt bad Every- for him. He got shit on that episode. Dude, everybody <laughs> was shitting on him that episode. I was like, damn, dude. But he doesn't give in. He keeps going. He starts to he try he decides to build a bridge instead of burn one down. And I liked that. Quite um, literally, yeah. Yeah. That, that that's good stuff, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then he loses the hawk. And he has a purple mohawk. I'm like, yes, yeah. it's purple. Even, uh, even what's her name? Off. Moon Moon, right? Moon liked mm-hmm. it too. She was like, yo, I like the purple, yeah. Well, it was short-lived, Josh, but it happened. <laughs> it's okay. My boy got his redemption. He won the tournament. Uh, he got his confidence. Like, he was kind of lost, and he's like, I'm the one that's going to win this whole fucking thing. And he does it. He also kicks the shit out of Kyler, which is Kyler's role, which is to get his ass kicked every chance dude, he Dude, I, I, I enjoy watching Kyler get his ass beat every time, dude, because that guy is such a... He's, he's got such, such a, a shit, mouth. He's, he's, he just talks shit nonstop. He always gets his ass kicked, though. I love it. I, um, I, 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 it, it's enjoyable watching him get his ass beat for sure. Uh, but yeah, a lot, a lot of the fight, the fights at the tournament were great. Um, mm. I, Dimitri, even Dimitri gets some. Dimitri fights Robbie at one point, and I think it's a pretty good little fight. And Dimitri, like, even seems to hold his own a little bit. He did great, which is interesting to see, like, how from season one. And I sure not everybody loves Dimitri. Obviously, he's. The character can be a little annoying at times, but like, he's definitely uh, a different I, character now from season one. I feel like. Yeah, like I definitely was not a fan of him in the earlier season. I was like, this guy sucks, dude. Like, just kick his ass already, dude. Like, get him out of here. But he, yeah, he's he's definitely he's gotten better, you know. So mm, he's grown. That's, and that's, that's good. Yeah. Which is why kids do. They grow and change. Indeed, um, indeed. Yeah, but there's there's so much like again, I, I I will never stop praising the way they used like footage from the old movies and then you know uh Iliad scenes and all that stuff and they, they mix and combine it with, with the show, man. It's so good. Like every time something Miyagi pops up and then you know you, like there was a shot where they had Miyagi and Daniel side by side, like it was Miyagi from the movies and, and current Daniel right now in Cobra Kai and it was great, man. It's fucking amazing. Yeah. Um the, also, like this, the flashback where Miyagi's like, you find your own way kind of thing resonated yeah, a lot yeah, in yeah. this season. Which this season very much felt like a find your own way kind of season. Uh, but yeah, what were you going to say? No, I was just like, dude, they, they, uh, Miguel was talking to his mom about, uh, you remember when Johnny made the, the authentic chilies for, uh, for for Miguel's family when they were all chilling yes. together eating and whatnot. Yes. They were talking about how um how me how Johnny had gone on a a date with his your former you know the, Oh my god. The the the, the it, Miguel phrased it like you know the one that got with the one that got away or no something way. like that, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I was just thinking I was dying inside. <laughs> oh yeah, I was like, oh please, I was like, Miguel, no, don't do him like that, man. Like he's trying here, dude. But I was just thinking, like, yo, are we gonna get more Allie this season? And then she just never showed up. I was like, oh, because I, I like Elizabeth Shoot, man. I wanted to see her again, but mm. maybe, maybe next season or something. I don't know. But yeah, every time Johnny interacts with uh, Miguel's family is always funny, and the grandma, dude, she be cracking me up, bro. <laughs> she I got is the so funny. I got yeah, I got the munchies. Man. And then she's like, oh, <laughs> when, she, when, when, she, when he was talking about, like, Miguel getting practice with Sam or whatever, he's like, oh, physical contact oh or whatever. So that, that lady is hilarious, dude. She'd be cracking me the fuck up, dude. Uh, but, yeah, that's that's always funny, man. 
that's always good stuff. And then like, <laughs> jo- and that same scene uh, where with uh, where Johnny made the chilies for them or whatever. He's like, oh, I got the website off chilies, and he, but 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 the thing that got me was like, I tried to make it authentic, and and the grandma was like, for who? We're we're Ecuadorian, not Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and Johnny's like pouring out fucking like uh, the sauce. Oh, just and like stuff. The, and he's like just like the old country. Like, oh, is, yeah, just like the old country. Like, what? <laughs> what? what are you talking about, Johnny? Oh, he's so funny to he's, me, dude. He, 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 I'll, uh, he's trying. I'll give him that. But, he tries. Man, he tries. What the fuck are you talking about, dude? It's just like the old country, dude. What the hell? Oh, that was. What does that even mean, Johnny? What the hell? Oh, fuck. Yeah. It, an- another great season, though, man. Like, I, again, this is like one of my favorite shows because immediately, as soon as I, f- I finished the last episode, I want more. Yeah. And I know I'm not going to get more because I just fucking binged the whole thing in like two to two, three days. I took like three days, I think, to watch it all. I would have been two, but like we had New Year's and shit. So I had, you know, I didn't watch any of that day. Yeah. But. Anyway, like I, I, yeah. The point is, I watched this show really fast, and not, and I because I love it. Like I want, I want to, I want to watch it, man. Like I want to watch more. Like it, it, I want to, I want to consume this this top tier media that it, that it, and entertainment that is brought to us from, you know, uh, everybody who's involved in this, you know, Netflix and Sony and all that. You know, like it, it, oh god, a lot of these. I was just sitting here looking at the cast. I was like, I was just sitting here thinking, we're looking at the next generation of superheroes because they like, they like all have a good chunk of them have martial arts experiences. Um, True. They're young. I mean, some of them are already superheroes, like like Miguel, you know. Yeah, uh, Miguel. He's gonna be uh, uh, Cholo Cholo Maridueña. He's he's Blue Beetle. We're getting Blue Beetle. Blue Beetle. Yeah. I'm so hyped for that. I can't wait, dude. Because I like the I like the actor. I like the character of Miguel. And I love the character of Blue Beetle, so I'm fucking, I'm all for this, dude. I'm ready, man. I'm here for it. Yeah, I'm, I'm in. Uh, I can't wait to see. Uh, I feel like the the creators of the show had they they had planned for six seasons, and we're gonna get a season five because that's renewed. So if yeah. we get season five and we get season six, I wonder how it all end, and then like all these folks will move on to other projects, I guess. But, um. I just love Cobra Kai, and I really don't ever want it to end because obviously I love it. But all good things do come to an end eventually. Yeah. So I was uh, that actually was going to be one of my questions to you. Like, how long do you think the show is going to go on for? Because they, I could see, we, I we could just, see the we, six seasons. Yeah, yeah, we we got we got a season four, and yeah, I, I remember hearing something about wanting to do five seasons, but like this show was like too good right like like how do they just unless they have like a really good ending like how do you end it like i i like for me i would want them to keep it moving and like as long as they can keep it up at this quality like keep it going for as long as you can man but obviously you know they may have other plans but i mean in my in my opinion like if if they can make each season as good as they have the you know three and four and like you know like uh, at the rate they've been keeping these up i'm all for this too keep going man like I'm, I'm i'm about it dude yeah uh as long as the quality is good and stuff i could see him keep going i feel like the original plan was six but i could see him going past that with the uh, as stories will change and 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 go as long as they give us a good ending and don't game of thrones us you know i oh, hate for that no. to happen no. yeah no um don't 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 game of thrones it don't walking dead it you know like end it before Find your good ending and end it there. Yeah. Don't don't force it to be a thing if you can. exactly. But all I'm saying is if they can if they can keep it up at this quality at this level, then keep it going, man. Because I I love it. I'm all about yeah. it. Dude. I can't. But get Daniel enough. Daniel's saying we need more guest stars like Carrie Underwood to show up. No, <laughs> I, mean, I mean listen. Look, listen. I'm sure Carrie is a lovely human being. I've never met her. But I'm sure she's she's fine and she's a fan of the show and I'm I think it's cool when when if you're a fan of something and they you know they they let you uh you know they they give you a little little guest guest spot on the show for a little bit I'm sure that that's awesome but I don't know for me it was just like once you started to get into the whole like inspirational 
speech type thing, I was like, oh, please, please no. Like, like, just do something fun here, Carrie, but don't, you know. I knew they were going to have her singing and whatnot, which, of course, but, you know, it's like, okay. And I could, like, I, I could do without it, but whatever. I mean, in other words, I'm not shitting on her because I'm glad she, she, she got, she got the chance to be on the show and, you know, because she's a fan of it and stuff. But I just, like, I, I, I could do without it, you know. I'm just like, eh, but again, I'm glad it was over quick. That's all. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I have much more to say. I've I've kind of touched on everything I wanted to touch on. Uh, I just really enjoyed this season. I had a, a really good time with it. The music is great. I, uh, you know, they pull some of really the classics out too season. as well. Yeah. So. Yeah, I love uh, the music and the soundtrack and everything. I still and... love Hawk's theme from. Uh... Oh, dude! I love when uh, in the uh, speaking of Hawk in the uh, Robbie and and his fight when Robbie takes his shirt off. And then Hawk is like, all right, well, I'll do the same. Well, he is. turns around and he like does this thing and the eagles <laughs> and the, the hawk noises. Oh, that shit's, I love every time. The guy, yeah, do too. It's so good. The little hawk sound effect. Honestly, the, I want to go back and just watch that fight again. Yeah, like they have such, that fight is such a great fight. And then they fight it to sudden death. Um, like they last that long fighting each other. Like, yeah. yeah it was, and, it, it was and then even stuff. Robbie. Even Robbie bows to him and shows respect, even though Terry's like, you're showing him respect. Oh, show him respect. Kind of thing that happens over on the side, you know? Like, yeah, because at the beginning, he's like, oh, this fight should should be over by now. Like, what are you doing, you know? But, uh, yeah, it was it was really good having the, the characters. I liked I like seeing uh, Reese and, and, and Terry kind of slowly devolve into enemies, uh, you know? Cause I mean, it's just I'm ter- Terry fucking Crease did him dirty too, man. Cause like he kept bringing up like, "Yo, the only reason you're still here is because of me." You remember Vietnam? And yeah. Even Terry brings up one place. He's like, "Yo, how many fucking times are you gonna tell me about Vietnam, dude? Like, what do I have to do to fucking repay that?" I can that always, debt, you know? I can always count on you to bring up the guilt. Like yeah. he even says that. Exactly. Uh, it's like, damn, dude. Like, I, like, I get it, you know. But fuck, dude. Like, you, you got, you gotta, you gotta stop bringing it up at some point, bro. Like, especially if, if that's really your boy, and you gotta, you gotta stop bringing that shit up, man. Here we go. Here we go. I got a meme for you. I'm gonna give it to you in Discord. All right. <laughs> you gotta, let's see. Because you just said it. Uh, uh, <laughs> work, <laughs> work through the PTSD. Invest in app development. Generally, well adjusted human being. Kicked the cocaine habit, has a loving partner, classical piano virtuoso, and Chris comes in Vietnam. Yeah, I'm gonna put, uh, I'm gonna show you, I'll show it to you guys on stream. Yeah, show it to the stream. It's so Vietnam. good. Vietnam. Really. Um, oh, poor, poor Terry, man. He lived his best <laughs> life man, until he got tricked by Chris into coming back, dude. Yeah. So, I mean, if you think about it, Chris did it to himself, man. Like, he, 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 he could have been just fine doing his own thing, but. That's the thing about this show, man. Like Josh said earlier, it's 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 not black and white, man. Everybody has their own their own angles, man. It's 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 not it's not that easy, huh? Yeah. Oh my god. One of my favorite moments is when Johnny sees uh, Anthony LaRusso and he's like, What happened to you? You switched to Whopper Jr. <laughs> that shit oh, was so dude, funny. <laughs> that shit cracked me up. Dude, Johnny, I, I fucking love Johnny, dude. He, he's got such like, good one liners sometimes. <laughs> when he was trying to recruit uh the girls to join oh his it's into eagle fang is like do i look oh. like i pee sitting down like oh. Miguel told him if he knows what that means <laughs> oh my god i love johnny dude he's so fucking funny bro he's uh, like oh, does it look like i pee sitting down or some shit dude oh god oh fucking love johnny man what what a character dude what mm-hmm. a character and then he and then even like when miguel is talking to him about 80s music and how you know some of the, the the music that you know, because John or Daniel was like, "Oh, here's there's there isn't just hard rock. There's here's like the soft rock or whatever of the '80s too." And then uh, you know he's talking to Johnny about like, "Oh, you never told me about this." And he's like, "Oh yeah," because he's like, and then the Miguel's like, "Oh, it's different." He's like, "Yeah, very different. Like it's not even. <laughs> it's like it's the opposite of badass. Like what do you mean?" <laughs> so yeah, just the banter from him and Miguel is always great and. And then yeah, or the back and forth rather, and then you know just, just Johnny in general, he's he's fucking hilarious, man. 
Dude, him trying to recruit girls for Eagle Fang, bro. When he's like, when one of the dads, I guess, is off on the side and he's like, uh, which one is yours? He's like, oh, I think that one over there. What do you, what, what do you think? No, oh, yeah. like that. I was like, Johnny, no, dude. What, no, are you, no, what, are you, what are you doing, bro? What are you doing? Uh, oh, my God. That shit's fun. It makes them, it, 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 the humor is great but um, it's a little cringy at times too when shit like that happens you're like oh no please johnny don't do this yeah yeah i was like no oh my god but uh, it's not it's not as bad because you know what he means but it's just so yeah fucking... of course but still <laughs> it's, it's like you know you're like oh god johnny no also I, I didn't bring this up earlier the cobra kai new training outfits look fucking dope the the red oh, that yeah, they wear yeah. The, the one in the dojos, you know, that uh, Terry buys them, I guess, and gives out. Yeah, because Terry, Terry got them all new gear, yeah. I was like, that shit looks dope. I'd wear that. <laughs> uh, yeah, they, they look really cool, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's Cobra Kai Season 4, man. It was a great time. I, I, I really like this show, man. I... I I love it. I again, it mm-hmm. ended, and I was I was wanting more, dude. So, yeah. Oh, it's just, yeah. Did you know that the uh, the cousin, uh, the, that's like a therapist that was talking to the Daniel and Amanda. Oh, that's fucking Ralph Mochio's daughter. That's his sister or daughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that's yeah. his daughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I was I, like, I, wait, I did, really? I did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I was like, damn. I bet that's it's weird. Clearly... That dude does not age, <laughs> like hardly. He's like the fountain of youth somewhere. He knows it was where it's weird at. Some, somebody somewhere was saying that like he's the age now that Pat Morita was when mm-hmm. we were doing the karate kid. I was like, what? But yeah, Ralph Macchio, man, that that dude, he he doesn't age, man. It's nuts. Which like, if you take that and like the actor that's Terry Silver is like like a few months younger than Ralph Macchio technically and he looks way older cuz he's got the like the gray hair and stuff. Yeah, um, it's, it's it's crazy. The dude, that dude It's crazy. Well, I have nothing else to say, I don't think. Uh uh go see Cobra Kai if you haven't seen it yet. If you haven't seen it yet, I'm sorry you got spoiled, but it's still worth watching. We are still here. I mean, I don't know what the hell you're doing if you haven't seen if you haven't seen it yet. Go go watch it. This show is incredible it's so good man to, to think it came from youtube red or youtube premium or whatever the hell it's called now and you know moved over to netflix for season three like oh man what a what a great show man so good so good but yeah i think that'll probably do it for this episode it was uh all right good. it was a fun one man it's yeah yeah uh it was a good time all right, we're going to swap over to our goodbye screens and do some goodbyes, guys. I know it's a shorter show, but there's just not a lot of news. And uh, I feel like we're so enthusiastic about Cobra Kai, like we just talk about everything uh, yeah. super quick. So let's pop over to Daniel. You're up, buddy. Thanks for joining us, guys, for the very first episode of 2022. It was fun talking about Cobra Kai. Um, join us next week where we will be having our games shows and movies preview for the year there's going to be a lot of exciting things coming out this year and uh, we're going to be talking about the, all of the stuff coming out this year you know uh that is scheduled to come out of course some stuff may get pushed back or you know push forward or whatever because it has been the past two years we, we know this all too well but i'm excited man there's a lot of good stuff coming and uh yeah, I uh, I look forward to talking about all that here next week with Josh. And uh, coming up for me on stream, I'm starting up story games again. I'm, I want to get to some of these games on my my backlog and on my you know library. So uh, tomorrow, I'm gonna be playing Sunset Overdrive. We're gonna be starting that. We're gonna check that out and see how it goes. So come hang out with me and ch- let's check that out. Yeah, I'll see you all. Next week, have a good one. May the force be with you all. Peace out. All right, guys. Thank you for checking out the show. Appreciate you all. Um, uh, make sure to follow us on all the deals. I'm going to start streaming again soon. We have new emotes. So if you subscribe, you can get those. I'm going to move the burger 
to the free one. So if you're a follower, you'll get the burger emote that you can spam in places and be like, look at this purple hamburger. Uh, which, by the way, Daniel made that for me. Uh, way a little while ago. Hashtag time burger time. Ago. Hashtag burger time. Because I love hamburgers. It's true. Um, I was looking to see if anybody's on that I can host, but I don't have anyone, uh, really. Because uh, I think we're ending longer than we usually do. So we'll just uh, close out with ads then. And we will see you all next time. Also, I'm going to make my comeback to streaming soon. Don't worry about that. Goodbye.